Exit polls from the 2024 presidential election. Kamala Harris, 54% women. Donald Trump, 54% men. How different age groups are voting. In the United States, holy f 18 to 29, 42% going to Trump on the exit polls. 18 to 29, 42%. Kamala Harris is beating in 65 plus. The bottom fell out, dude. That's it. I hope women stop dating men at this point because men vote against them every time. That's not how this works, chatters. Like, uh, you, you have to... <laughs> You have to actively tell them like, you know, shit's going to be fine. Okay. You're going to get a job. You're going to, we're going to get you a job. We're going to fix your educational situation. We're going to give you a trade school. We're going to give you in a, a better pathway for your future. In Michigan, 51% of the 18 to 29 demo went to Trump. People forgot hundreds of thousands of people also did not vote. It's not just them. It's people that go out and vote for the Republican Party. Kamala Harris is uh, no longer speaking at Howard University tonight. Large crowds have already begun to leave. It's uh, another sign that it might be f***ing Jover. Is the election done? I mean, it's, it's not fully done yet, but once Pennsylvania falls it's over but yeah they know they know it's over i mean that's why for the past like couple of hours i've been telling you that it's kind of jover yeah 160k behind mpa with 700k left she needs to win with a 70 30 margin too big to rig <laughs> yep they did it browsing r slash kamala <laughs> I feel bad making fun of this person. Like, I feel I feel bad making fun of this person. It's like, it's sad, <laughs> you know? Like, you look at that and you're like, it's cute. Aw, it's, it's a cute, it's a cute image. Blexus is real and it can't hurt you. Yeah, dude. The Latino vote is one that is going to be talked about quite a bit. If you recall, I talked to Greg Kazar, who won his race again in Texas, about this specific issue. The Latino vote especially in a place like Texas, is very unique. They want more government initiatives, but they also have a tendency to be more socially conservative. If one side is hamming up the social conservatism and the other side is not talking about government initiatives that might help them, yeah, they're going to go and f***ing vote for the guy that's like offering them shit. It's that simple. When you don't make an argument as to why people need to vote for you over the other party, they're not going to do it. They're just not going to do it. The Texas GOP Latino outreach has been so successful. They basically nationalized that entire structure. Young men who voted for Kamala on top right now, hella cred with the shorties. I don't think that's how it's going to work, but bro, when are we going to start to steal? I'm starting to get worried. <laughs> Guys, I just don't understand. Can someone explain to me how Kamala Harris lost this election? Because like, I thought it would be awesome if she kept saying how similar to Joe Biden she is, you know, after she replaced him. Because when Americans were like, hey, you're too old. You can't run for president anymore. I wanted the person that replaced that person to be like, I'm just like that old guy you hated. But I also was a big fan of uh, the former old guy's policy of we are also the border party now. We're the muscular border control party. I really like that because, um, you know, I also want to every undocumented immigrant in the country, but I'm also gay. That's the only difference. That's why I'm voting for the Democratic Party. <laughs> like what what argument were you presenting there? I just want to know. Like I wanted to just make sure that the Customs and Border Patrol that's 52% Hispanic already was also gay. And which in which case it would have been fine. I just, you know, I was it felt like every step of the way the Kamala Harris campaign was like tailor made for me. Whenever she said, "I've prosecuted transnational border gangs." I thought I like that. Whenever she said, I'm a small business. I love small business. <laughs> I love small business. <laughs> I was like, that's so me. I'm small business. I'm Brian Kill Me. I'm small business. That's what I said every time. But I never could have imagined my favorite politician that was undermined by Donald Trump and lost in a plus 40 red state, her own race, Liz Cheney, daughter of my second favorite politician, Dick Cheney, serial drunk driver, massive penis, killed tens, I mean, not tens of millions, but like displaced tens of millions of uh, people in the Middle East, destabilized the entire planet, made a tidy profit for Halliburton. That's my favorite. That's my guy. That's my second favorite guy. So when Kamala Harris started after all of the other stuff that she had done, when she started trotting out Liz Cheney, I was like, oh my God, finally a breath of fresh air. This campaign is just for me. I can't believe it. These are all of the things I wanted. These are all the things I wanted from a campaign. And she gave it to me 
directly. When she kept saying, we're going to do a ceasefire and a two-state solution, when she kept saying that, and then Joe Biden would go, yeah, that's right, Jack, we're going to do a two-state, no state. How about stateless, barterless, moneyless society? I don't know what's going on. I'm 800 years old. And then Benjamin Netanyahu the next day would be like, two states, suck my bitch give me fucking eight billion more dollars right now fuck you and then Biden was like look alive jack you're right you want to invade turkey too go ahead that's when i was like that's my favorite type of foreign policy i was like please more money so imagine my surprise when the campaign gave me everything i want i'm the median voter that's what the media represented it as they said this was a brilliant bold move imagine my surprise when my favorite candidate that did everything for me has this devastating devastating performance tonight it's just shocking when she said something that i've never heard a democrat say i want america to have the most lethal military okay i was like oh thank god what are militaries for i mean we should just change the department of defense back to the war department you know fuck it yolo don't even care about the optics anymore so when i see this i'm just confused i'm like how did this happen because why don't these people understand that like we want as serious americans we want a managed more moderate fascist government that's what we want because we're smart we're brilliant we're the smart intellectual guys not the and dumb guys over there look at them those dumb guys want something different they want what we want but not gay turns out if those are the only two alternatives america is gonna go with the the other side because i have no way of looking at what i experienced in this truncated 100 day campaign as anything but basically a fucking republican primary kamala harris looked at nikki haley's disastrous performance in the republican primary and said i want to be that but with a Democrat next to my name. Think about it. She literally looked at Nikki Haley, get absolutely destroyed in the Republican primaries and said, oh, that's my shit. I'll do that. And it turns out the Republican primary redo on November 5th looks quite similar to the Republican primary that had happened that, you know, gave Donald Trump the resounding success. I'm glad the leftists can sleep tonight knowing they didn't vote for Kamala on pure principle. Turns out right-wingers don't care about that. They vote anyway. Brother, it's not about principle. The overwhelming majority of this community that consider themselves to be leftists voted for Kamala Harris. What are you talking about? You are doing the problem. You're, you're deluding yourself into thinking that it's not the campaign's messaging. This is a 2016 defeat basically playing itself out. And the exact same copium is being pushed right now. If we don't provide an adequate counterbalance to growing American fascism and instead decide we're just going to do the same concentration camps and put a fucking rainbow flag on the side of it, we're cooked. Stop blaming your fellow Americans and start blaming the party. It is perhaps the absolute best, absolute greatest grift that these politicians have put together where we never get mad at them for their shit ass performance when we are yelling at them over and over again i had friends text me saying hindsight is 2020 i was like what do you mean hindsight that's just sight i said all of these fucking things while the campaign was going on that's not hindsight that's sight it's sight it's for it's not even foresight it's just sight <sighs> We got to start punishing the fucking losers among, amongst our ranks. Like, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, there's also this. You give Kamala every third party vote in all battleground states and she still would be behind in all of them. So what do you do? What do you do? What do you do?